In 2004, uh, some researchers at MIT in America were working on functionalized gold nanoparticles. They had attached two types of ligands to the surface of their nanoparticles, and when they observed them under the scanning tunneling microscope, they got very excited because they saw this pattern. They then conjectured that they had created something uh, like stripy nanoparticles, where the, um, the two types of ligands had spontaneously separated to form stripy features on the surface of the nanoparticles. So since then, these people have uh, collected a lot of funding, they got a prestigious chair in Switzerland, and they published about 25 or 30 papers to date uh, on the um, features and properties of these tripe nanoparticles. Unfortunately, however, recently a critical assessment was made for the evidence of these stripy nanoparticles and it very much looks like the original researchers have been looking at data artifacts for 10 years. So, in essence, these people have been misled by the data that they've received from the instrument into believing a structure that doesn't exist. Now, one of the reasons I bring up this story is that I think it's very important that we remain critical about the data we receive from any instrument and from any technique. Um, I am, of course, not the first one to say this. Uh, this guy, Dr. Richard Feynman, mentioned uh, how easy it is to make mistakes and fool yourself in science. Likewise, this guy, Dr. Ben Goldacre, has written a whole book about how easy it is to fool yourself in science and with science. So, the core message here is, let's not be fooled. A second reason why I'm bringing up this story is because, due to a combination of Twitter and the internet, I got in touch with the authors of this critical paper, and it turned out they needed somebody to look at some small angle scattering results. So that's how I got to be uh, a co-author on this paper as well. So, let it not be said that Twitter is not good for your career. Now, small angle scattering, uh, or small angle x-ray scattering in particular, is a technique which, uh, which can quantify nanoscale features from about 1 to 20 nanometers. The exact size range depends a little bit on the instrument that you use, but most instruments can cover this range very well. Now, the interesting thing about small angle scattering is that uh, when you compare it to other techniques uh, that probe the nanoscales, such as electron microscopy and atom probe, uh, small angle scattering uh, can probe much, much larger volumes while analyzing the same kind of size scales. So, as a bulk characterization technique, it's a very nice technique to use. Small angle scattering is a quite straightforward technique to do. We typically start from a monochromated X-ray source and we then cut the X-ray beam uh, using a collimator uh, to obtain a very parallel beam of X-rays. We then shine this beam of X-rays onto our sample and uh, electron density differences in the sample will cause a small fraction of the radiation to be scattered to small angles. We then stop the uh, transmitted but unscattered beam using the beam stop and we collect the scattered radiation onto our detector. In reality, the instruments very much resemble this principle. So, here we see a picture of a very large instrument at the Rizzo National Laboratories in Denmark. And we see on the left-hand side, we, we see our, um, uh, our rotating anode X-ray source. Then we see a few meters of collimation section, uh, a sample box, a few more meters with a slightly thicker tube uh, uh, before we hit the detector. The scattering intensity that we see in a small angle scattering experiment can be related to the structure in the sample by means of a Fourier transform. The, so the cool thing is that the small angle scattering instrument is essentially a Fourier transformer for anything that we put in the sample position. Unfortunately, however, we're not seeing the entire Fourier transform, we're only seeing the intensity component, which means that we've lost essential information uh, in this process. And this information loss is the reason why this is strictly a one-way process. So by collecting the scattered intensity, we cannot uniquely retrieve the electron density structure that is inside our sample. And this is one of the reasons why many people are having so many problems when they measure small angle scattering patterns to try and extract physically relevant information from small angle scattering. In Inexperienced hands, small angle scattering can be a very dangerous technique to use, 
simply because this technique allows you to make mistakes without any clue that anything is wrong. For example, if you haven't done your data corrections uh, sufficiently, you can still analyze your data and you can still get uh, nanostructural parameters out. Um, it's just that the parameters will be wrong because your data is wrong and there's nothing to indicate that any of this is incorrect. On the other hand, small angle scattering is a very powerful technique. It is one of the few techniques which allows you to get nanostructural information for very large amounts of sample material in a relatively straightforward process. So in order to make it easier for people to use small angle scattering in the right way, I've spent my research time uh, in the field of applied metrology of small angle scattering. This is just a fancy way of saying that we're taking a close look at, uh, at ways for accurate data collection to then separate the data from its many measurement artifacts and to then analyze this data with the best analytical techniques possible.